Welcome to the RSP Film Room. The following videos that are going to be used in the RSP Film Room um, are not hosted on any server of mine, and um, the original video content on those highlights are not considered property of the RSP Film Room. Um, they're considered to be used under the Fair Use Doctrine of the United States Copyright Law, Title 17 U.S. Code Sections 107 through 118. And the videos are used on this, on really on this um, page for editorial and educational purposes only. We're only looking at a total of about 10 to 15 minutes worth of um, footage from a few games. Um, and we do not claim ownership of any original video content. And um, I do not use any of these videos in advertisements, marketing, or direct financial gain. All the video content in each clip is considered really owned by the individual broadcast company. So there's that. So if you were a bot program that was following up, somebody who was following up on a bot program and wants to see that, I'm using this for educational purposes. So there's that. I'm Matt Waldman for the RSP Film Room, and this is episode number 31, and we are doing an encore presentation of Nebraska wide receiver Kenny Bell. And I, I, you know, honestly, as I was telling my guest, um, who I'm going to introduce in a minute, I don't care if anybody watches this this particular episode. I, I'm pretty sure you will, um, but I really don't because I think this guy is just a fantastic player, and I could watch this guy probably three or four times and do three or four shows on him. And then in three years, when he blows up and plays well, then y'all will want to watch him and, and see what was going on back then. But the guy who brought it up to me and made me just laugh and go, oh, "Yeah, we'll do it again," <laughs> is none other than football game plans Teron Davenport um, Teron Teron just joined um, fo football game plan with the like with the likes of Emory Hunt and Gene Clemens um, and he does excellent work he's done excellent work around the web and uh, you know I've, I was very fortunate to get a chance to meet him at the senior bowl last year and we hung out a little bit and watched some wide receivers and defensive backs so it made me smile when uh on when you told me that Kenny Bell was the guy that you wanted to watch. So welcome to the show, and uh, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got into all of this, and then why why Kenny Bell. Well, uh, first off, man, it's an honor to be on here. I, I love your knowledge. It goes back to you know uh, my man from California, uh, Marvin Jones. You know that's when I first saw the work that you could do, and and man, I, I just loved it. And that's when we first started talking. So I just want to let you know it's an honor. I really respect your opinion. Thank as you. far as as far as doing this. I originally played football for Delaware State University. I transferred to Cheney University, which is a small school in Pennsylvania, and then I had the opportunity. Saskatchewan, they were looking at me, but the money and, and the whole situation didn't work out the way I wanted to, so I ended up just becoming a regular working person, but still had the love for football, just like you and a lot of other guys that do what we do. So eventually uh, I, I found a way to get involved with the game by – writing. I created my own website and uh, ironically my favorite quarterback Colin Kaepernick his agent saw an article that I did on him after a Chicago Bears game his first start and she gave it to him he put it on Facebook and then opportunities started to open up and just kind of worked my way through the the whole process and, and man I'm so happy to be with Emory and football game plan then I also covered the Ravens for the Baltimore Times so it's been great, man. I love draft work. The first guy that I ever looked at on the draft, Derek Brooks. Wow. That's you know, so it, right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. That's excellent. That's excellent. So, yeah, I mean, it's a football game plan. I can't recommend them enough. You guys definitely, you know, Emery and Gene do great work, and Teron does great work. It's a great addition for them. Um, so I definitely recommend you check out everything they do, college and NFL. So um, without further ado, let me ask you, well, before we do that, we'll delay it a little more because we'll make it a tradition here where I have these long introductions. But <laughs> tell us a little, tell, tell, tell everyone a little bit why you wanted to watch Kenny Bell. Well, Kenny Bell is a guy that, that I like because of how he plays on the outside. He's a technician. It, it's easy to talk about guys like Amari Cooper and, and Kevin White and Devontae Parker, and the list goes on and on. I wanted to talk about somebody that really is a, a very good football player and should be ranked higher than he is. But as you mentioned, this is a guy that down the line people are going to come back to this and say, you know what? 
those guys were on to something back then, and I, that's really why. I love his, his game, the, his, his footwork at the line of scrimmage, the way he attacks the football, and you'll see in some clips here. So we'll, we'll definitely get into that, but that's why I selected him. Yeah, and we're going to watch three games from Bell. Um, we're going to watch the Northwestern game. We're going to watch highlights of the from Fresno State and highlights from the Illinois game, all from this year. And, you know, Bell is a wide receiver and kick returner. He's also someone that you, you know, you're going to see really a multifaceted player who, who can win in pretty much all phases of the game that you would demand from a wide receiver. And it's funny that you mentioned Marvin Jones because there's a lot of Marvin Jones technical aspects of his game that remind me a lot of Kenny Bell. Yes, and I, I, I joke around that like if you were to if you were to take a player take a bunch of players and put them in Dr. Frankenstein's lab and like put them all together, you take Marvin Jones, you take some Heinz Ward, and then you take maybe a little bit of, of Brandon Lloyd and you put them all together and you would end up with a guy like Kenny Bell. So that's at least my that's my comp for him, but but uh, we're going to go ahead and start this up. And for those of you new to the RSP film room, it's just two guys watching tape. Um, we're going to keep it on half time, talk about what we see. We'll have dead air where we don't talk about it, you know, where we just watch and see what's going on. We're the, there's going to be a lot of times where we repeat um, plays and and just really talk about concepts of what makes a good wide receiver, why we like Kenny Bell, and ask each other questions about what we're seeing. So there you have at it. I'm going to share the screen, make sure that Tehran and I um, can see the, this together here and get this presented to everybody. You good? I'm good. All right, let's do it. Let me go ahead and get this rolling finally. All right. Turn down the sound. Now we got Bell's number 80, and he's on the left. I already like the drive phase just from the beginning there. Mm -hmm. And for those of you new, I mean, you know, part of part of good receiver play, I always talk about telling a story, and and how you want to sell that story. And part of that story is you always want, if as much as possible, getting that receipt that defender to respect the vertical game. And when you're in a drive phase, which is kind of that exit from the line of scrimmage with a sprinter type of a of a alignment where your pads are over your toes and you're taking long steps to drive and get accelerate yes yeah, see that that's really important to get a, a strong release off the line especially when you're running these type of routes because this is one of those things where I call it, you're moving the DB without touching them you know, just by releasing, getting a hard release like that, you're pushing him back. And you see how he bails out of the screen. And that gives him the ability to stop, turn around, and square his numbers up and give the quarterback a nice target. Yeah. And what's nice about this is we can, you know, I, I often like to talk about when to nitpick and when not to nitpick. And about, because we're all, we're all, this is a process for anybody who's watching this. You're probably enjoying the idea of evaluating players and doing your own evaluations, just like we're doing the same thing, and we're always constantly learning. And, and one of the balances of learning to evaluate is to know the difference between nitpicking a point that really isn't that important to that analysis and then also finding it and also finding the context for where it is. And something like this, you can look at an individual play like this and see that the defender's already bailing out. Bell's already driving, but you can see where maybe his pads come up a little bit just before he, you know, maybe three or four steps before he actually makes his break. But it's a, you know, it wouldn't be something that I would sit there and say, well, you know, he tips off this break in this particular situation. The head's still down even though the pads come up a little bit. You could say that in the future, if he does this more often against tight coverage, it's going to matter on a play like this where the defender already respects his speed. You know, it's something to note and watch as a little fine point, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not a it's not a major thing right now. He said he loves the block. That's one thing he said he takes pride in. It. There you have it. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, it's nice position. You know, looking at the position. You got a man 
you know, he's having to set up a man who's got inside shade over him and turn him outside. This is one area in talking to him that he said he would like to improve his strength. You know, he, he said that he he's up about 10 pounds. I think he's at 197 right now. Only did seven reps on the bench. So, again, this is just nitpicking, but this is an area where he could improve and that he could be a little bit stronger and, and get a better push, you know, to drive him out the way more. But you'll see later in, in, this, uh, in this game that he has uh, really the ability to block downfield. Yeah, and what's nice here is he's letting the defender go where he wants to go and then using that to his advantage because once right. the defender turns outside and comes and then works back upfield, now you're seeing Bell attach and drive him down to the ground. So even though in the context of what happened here is, you know, it was a short gain only to the outside, that didn't have anything to do with Bell. Nice back shoulder catch there. Absolutely. And, I mean, what are, you know, when you look at a, let me ask you, I mean, just as a receiver, when you were, when you had guys play, like, uh, you know, either shaded one side or another or over top, what are things that you're thinking when you're at the line of scrimmage and you have a guy pl playing either, you know, maybe a half a step outside, half a step inside or over top? What, are, what does that make you have to consider? Well, it all depends on where you want to go, and really the whole thing is to get him to commit to the opposite side of where you want to go, and that's why you want to, at your release, you want to kind of give him a move to, to slow him down so you can eliminate that cushion right there. So that's really the main, see how you give him that move inside, and then you see how now he's coming back outside, and just that move right there, he eliminates the cushion, and also in doing that, you know, the DB was not able to get his hands on him or anything like that. So right there at that point where you're pointing at, he's already won. That's a great point. Because now all he has to do, I mean, even just the hand swat away from there, there's really nothing he had to do there because the defender is already kind of a half step behind there. And it's just not, you know, there's a comfort level of him even operating in tighter coverage because this isn't, you know, the defenders, I wouldn't say exactly glued to him, but it's a pretty tight, it's pretty tight coverage all the way here. And yeah, that's a good it, catch there. it is, I mean, it's, a, and it's well placed to his outside shoulder and, you know, even though he has to go a little low. Were low passes harder to dig out for you than high ones, or you know, do, what do receivers do? Receive? Do you find that receivers like higher throws versus lower throws, or you know, it depends on the size of the guy? I tell you, I I don't know a receiver that likes a high throw, man. You don't like to have your back and all that exposed when it's, it's time to make that catch. Yeah, I find that the low throws are the underrated, have underrated difficulty to them, but I certainly understand that. But you can see the sense of this speed right here. Yeah. And then look at the high point. So they're going to, I think they show this in slow motion, slower motion. So you look right here, okay. Now you see he wants to get inside, right? So right. what does he do? He gives him a step inside, a jab step inside, and then a jab step outside. And look, this DB, look, look at how off balance he is. You see yeah. that? You see that? It looks like he's ready to sit down in a chair. And, and look, look. If you look, he has that inside. All this right here is is open for him. Yeah. Just because he's got that DB flat footed and he's on his toes. Yeah, that's a very good point. And what you see is how well he sells that move because, I mean, his whole body is sold into that move. But because yeah. he's also on his toes, like you say, and he's dictating the action. And you see right there at the 40, they're even. And I tell you, receivers have a saying. If I'm even, I'm leaving. And he left him right there. Yeah, it's bye-bye right there. And, I mean, if this pass is thrown a little better, he's gone. Exactly. But he has to wait for it and make the adjustment. Look at that. Yeah. And he catches it around the arm. That's yeah, the other thing we're going to see in a minute, like you said. 
That's not an easy catch to make because that DB had his arms. Now you can see it right here. Look at the move. Fake outside, and look, that guy's committed to the outside. Now he's he's done. He's done. Yeah. Even the stumble and stride. Mm -hmm. takes that off. Look at that. Yeah. Goes up and attacks it. But see, this is a key part that a lot of receivers don't do, and that's look it all the way into the tuck. And you see how he's he's going to secure that ball all the way to the tuck. The DB has, you see his hand right in there. That's a hard catch to make. That's yeah. a very hard catch to make with the DB trying to move his hand to knock the ball away. Absolutely. And you can see the technique. I mean, you look at the hands technique, you know, got the got the fingers up, you got the thumbs together. You might want the fingers a little closer together if you're going to really nitpick it, but it's still, I mean, it's close and, you know, it's good enough that that's a, that's a fine catch. And it's good technique. Technique is something that you can always get better at. It doesn't mean because it's not picture perfect that you're not good at it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, and he's definitely good at it. It just may not. You know, we're just pointing. Out, I'm just pointing out at least in this one little things that may not be picture perfect that a team would go, yeah, or he'll throughout his career may go, I got to work on that. Look at that. I like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. And there's force behind that, and it's the it's it's the correct shoulder on top of that. That shows the want to to block, you know. Yeah. You, you have the ability to block, but then you also have the want to to block. Like he really seek that, you know. He searched for that guy, and and that was a, a good block right there, and it did allow Abdullah to get a few extra yards. So you gotta like that. Yep, and it's it was within a second step that he diagnoses where he has to go. Yep. And that seals that inside for him. That's a difference between a first down and not. Yes, sir. And this one was a disappointment here. Yeah, that looked like he just completely misjudged the trajectory of the ball. That happens. Yeah. That's one of those ones where you, you, you're trying to do something with it before you get it, and that's why it goes back to what we said about looking it into the tuck, securing the football first. Yeah. And it's interesting because he gets his – you watch right here where he is – where he's upfield, and you see him – you know, let's see where he turns – he turns and he and obviously he spots the ball, or at least he gets his eye, his head around. And you have to wonder because it's such an egregious. It seems to bounce off of him after his hands are already up. I mean, it's like his hands are up and the ball arrives at his chest. Or his, he he knows that he has to make a move or do something to get a few extra yards. Because best believe that when he ran that route. He's looking at, at he's he's understands where he is on the field and where he needs to get. So uh, that's one of those cases where you, you're looking to to make a move and do something, but again, you you forget the most important part, and that's securing the football first. Absolutely. My only other question was going to be is was it possible it got lost in the lights for him and he just lost it there? But but it, I can see where that's because when you see when he. It's, you can see that he's like the way that he snatched his hands back down. That he, yeah, it looked like a lapse of thought to get up feel like you were saying. <laughs> Normally on, on those type of plays, you, you get a quarterback this one. My bad, my bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought he lost it in the lights. But yeah, I can see where that's a lapse because it's. Let's see where we got here. Third and seven. Yeah. And this and so you know, this is something that I have definitely heard as a criticism of Bell is that he does have some occasional drops and lapses in concentration. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. I, I think it's interesting how 
it, it seems like they try to get this guy in situations to where he'll catch the ball short of the first down and they're relying on his ability to make something happen after the catch. It, it's almost like that's the, the – not almost. It, it is the design of, of the play. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, these are – you know, let's see if there's anything that we can look at that would just, I mean, it's a little bit behind him. The hands are a little, you know, like I've shown before, a little bit wide apart. But at the same time, you know, these are these are small things that he still should have been able to catch it there. Right. You know, so that's a, that would be the one thing that, you know, if, if you were, if scouts are watching and they're only watching a select amount of games, they may see enough drops that they may they may look at that and they have downgraded him some from that level. But we're going to see plenty of catches from him that that show just like players like Terrell Owens or Chad Johnson, um, who have had their share of drops in the league, also came up with some you know they were very productive receivers and made some fine plays as well. That when he kind of over pursued his guy, he didn't run under control. See that? Yeah. But what you like about him, in addition to that, is that he doesn't give up on the play. Right. You know, okay, so Abdullah makes the block there, and then he turns right around and gives chase, and at least is, he's <laughs> flailing, but he's trying, you know. <laughs> Couple swats there. <laughs> <laughs> he looked a lot more like my cat chasing a dog down the street, but now we got ourselves a deep post. He did a good job running this route right here. Do they show a replay of the route or I believe they do. Okay. Yeah, they they do. They'll show it uh, next clip there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so if you look here, what you'll see him do is get that inside release and kind of work his way. See how he releases inside, and then look at look at right here. He's starting to lean to the corner. Right. Yes. And, and that's another one of those things where it, he didn't. It wasn't as dramatic. I would like to see him kind of look to the corner also, because that's another way your eyes will redirect where a corner is. So, and when I say corner, I'm talking about that corner route. If, if he could look to that a little bit more and then stick his foot in the ground and then explode back inside, he would be more open. But still, he in the NFL, this is open. What you see right here, that's that's open, and that's why. The quarterback made that throw. I mean, he has an inside position. You would like to see the ball a little bit more upfield, but at the same time, it is a catchable football. Yeah, and that was a well-defended football, too, when you look yeah. at it from this angle. You, you see know. him kind of chop down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that he has to lean back and just kind of drag and wait – Yeah, that's a well defended play. I would I would I don't know about you, but I would think out of the out of ten, you know, we could pick the top ten wide receivers in the NFL and probably half the time they'd drop that ball. It's always hard to catch the ball when they're chopping down on your arms like that. That's a very hard catch to make. What is this one? Yeah. This is a good game because this is a game where I, I've seen more drops in this game from him than I've seen in any game thus far. So it's... it's that's, a, that's a tough catch to make there. But at the same time, you know, if you're going to be playing on the next level. This is a catch you have to make. And part of that is where he has his hands. You know, this, this looks almost like 
he has his hand set up for a different arrival of the ball than right. what it really does because his hands should probably be underhand at this point. It, it but should he's be this way. You know, instead of instead of like this, it should be more like this. So that way he could catch it and then pull it in and secure it to his body and land on his shoulder. You know what I mean? So that way it doesn't come out. Absolutely. The palm, sh palm should be facing up in the air. Should have the, you know, should have more of the pinkies together as opposed to the thumbs being together where you have him right now. So he's almost right. scooping the ball to control it than what he's doing right there. Because you saw where it, it faltered here. And it falters because we don't see it in the shot as clearly, but this elbow, I believe, hits the ground or it comes close. It doesn't hit the ground there. It's just more him trying to get control of it in an awkward angle. Because he doesn't really have that good hand position there. So yeah, that's a that's something that can be corrected and can be corrected fairly easily just with a focus on you know, making sure that you're you're more technically sound about how you approach catching a ball like that. Right. Yeah. So here's a rebound of what we saw earlier. Same exact look, third and seven, same exact situation. Yeah. And you actually see the type of hands technique that he should have caught on the play we just saw him miss. So you yeah. know that he's capable of catching a ball that's thrown low with the correct technique. That was just a bad choice in his vocabulary at that at that stage of the game. This one was much better. That's a big sign play right here. You know, it, make this uh, catch across the middle, break the tackle, and get some extra yards. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, but he's a wiry, strong kind of guy. He may not have the bench press strength, but he does have a wiry strength to his build. And you see that in the way that he delivers hits, the way that he takes hits, and the way that he can break through wraps. Okay. This is now. Remember, we talked earlier about raising up and uh, how he he kind of gave his route away. This route right here. These are the type of things I love about this kid, man. I love this about him. He knows. Okay, so here it is. He knows he has to get inside. He set this route up perfectly. Again, he he's stemming towards the inside, sticks his foot in the ground, goes up field. But then watch this. I think in the replay they'll show it better. Okay. What was interesting is he kind of raised up before his break on that one, but it was almost to set up the defender. See, here it is right here. See how he just, a nice change of direction, sunk his hips, stuck his foot in the ground, turned back around, and, and it, it squared up. Look at that. Yeah, sitting in the chair right there. That's exactly. perfect. That's perfect. And it really is. It's not about how fast you run. It's how fast you can stop. Right. Right. Look at that. That's yeah. a nice catch right there. It secures the ball. And again, it's a, it's a waste. It's a waste high catch. Now, you can see where that technique could be a little bit better where he's kind of clapping down on the ball. But these are things that he can get better on. You see the hand-eye coordination. The hand-eye coordination is good. You see him make some really strong catches and tight coverage, so he's got strong hands. He's got good concentration on a lot of tough plays. And when he misses some plays, he comes back and makes some ones that are equally t difficult or even harder, which is, a, which is really what you're looking for from any prospect. Because prospects are going to make mistakes. Any player is going to make mm -hmm. mistakes. You want to see whether they can come back from them or they get into a rut and disappear. And, and this kid doesn't disappear. This is another good setup. Look at that. That's textbook. Yeah. 
let's see that setup again because the setups to me are always one of the more interesting things about this is he's patient and I think that's the big thing is you he's not charging up field but at the same time you know he's letting the defender make the first move and then he accelerates into the play once he knows that the that the cornerback commits then it's time to attack yeah and just carry him right where where he wants to go yeah that's a that's a fine block And he's very good at slipping his hands inside there. That's something right. that we're seeing consistently with him, is that even if he doesn't get the first contact, like this play doesn't get first contact. First contact comes from the defender. But watch him slide his hands over and inside, and then grips the, you know, grips the <laughs> chest plate there. And that's what you want to see. Then we see my other favorite player in this draft class take over from there. Yeah, I tell you, Abdul. A lot of people are, are are dropping him because of that forty time, man. It, you know, it's one of those things where some guys run a forty uh, on the field a lot better than they do uh, on the track. So I I can't drop Abdul. I think he's still a second round prospect, but that's a different conversation that we could have. Oh yeah, and I I would just you would you're just singing to the choir there or preaching to the choir on that one because. Yeah, I mean, I look at all the other explosive agility and explosion times that he had that were, you know, some of the best that we've seen at the position. And uh, that's all I need to know, uh, in addition to what I've seen on film. Here he is again. And yeah, I mean, the effort's there. He's, he fights till the end. It, you know, it wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Same thing there. Not pretty, but... Just get in the way. Yep. Pretty play from the quarterback. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was nice. All right, so we're going to go on to the next game, but I think one of the things that I really enjoyed seeing there, I actually enjoyed seeing that he dropped the ball because I hadn't seen too many of those, and I've heard people talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the things that I that I really got to see that I thought were interesting is, you know, him bounce back and play well and, and make good plays, and also that a lot of these plays were just due to hands position you know, and, and really just improving that hands position and showing hands position. And he showed in later, later reps that he could, you know, that he could, uh, make plays with better hand position that were fitting, that were fitting for the target. Yeah, so yeah those, those drops are correctable. Yeah. And here we are, we're going to have another telling a story and you're seeing, we've seen repeatedly where we've got guys playing tight to him. So that's nice. And this is a subtly a nice little route because he it looks to me like he sells a little bit of a slant here, you know, cutting in. And a part of it's getting out away from the linebacker, but the defender had to honor the slant a little bit. And he looked back towards the defender just before he breaks. So you're seeing a little bit of a, well, maybe See, not. That's, that's another one where he's he's open right at the release, and it's something that he said he was working on coming into this year was getting uh, better at the release. And if you see when he gets off off the ball, once again, he's trying to go inside, so what does he do? He gives him the move outside, and then if you look right here, you have the DB frozen. And I, I, I don't care what corner, I don't care who you are, if you're caught in that position that you're showing right there, 
your beat. Yeah, that's a great point. It's basically, sit down, young man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a seat. There you go. And that quickness is definitely on display. And it's good that he's, you know, whether that's his assessment from watching his own tape, whether that's a coach's assessment, he's taking advantage of what his best skills are. And his best skills are, let me get on top of you early. Let me pose a threat to get on top of you early. Because if I can do that, then I can tell any story I want in variation to get open. Nice. Now, I, I personally wouldn't mind seeing him bring those arms in a little bit further inside <laughs> if he can't even get a grip so he's yeah. not in danger of some of the, you know, of a holding call. Cause we've seen that a couple of times, but again, correctable. And that was, he had a nice, he had a little bit of a rip going through there, I believe. I think he rips through that. Yeah, he does. He's... So you see a rip, and while it's not to him, you know he had he had position to be able to be to be targeted here. And here's the thing: this is like I th I kind of think prospects sometimes. I don't know about you, but you know the way people rate prospects. I think the reason why we think he's underrated or is that teams are looking for flawless guys at the top. They want to see. They, they don't want to see a lot of flaws or they want to see absolutely great hitting every mark, athleticism and production. It's kind of like buying a, you know, it's like buying a new car versus buying a used car. Um, and I think that sometimes they're, they kind of look at it as, you know, Kenny Bell's kind of their version of a used car, but he might be a really nice SL 500, you know, you know, that's in really good shape and only needs, you know, a little bit of work done to it to um, really, really get the most out of it. Yeah, that's true. But that was a tough one. Yeah. That quarterback tried to squeeze that one in there. Yeah. Let's see. I've seen him make slants like this, but I want to see if it's, again, hands technique coming through here. He gets through well. The ball's on top of him before he even – I think the ball's on top of him before he even realizes it's there. Yeah. So this is more of, you know, probably again a little bit more getting his head and hands around early. And also, I don't think he's expecting, like you said with the quarterback there, getting it in tight like that. I don't think he realistically expected he was going to catch, he was going to be targeted because he sees the defender inside here. And he's not even, you know, he's like two steps away from contact when, and he's like, oh, the ball. You know, I look at that. Look at that up there. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the ones you go back to the quarterback. And you just give him that look, like, "Come on, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's some work to get in right there. And it's like, oh, by the way, I am getting the ball. Okay. Now, again, you know, there are going to be plays like, do you want to see him make that catch? Yes. And maybe we're, you know, I feel like. There's going to be folks listening to this and going, we're a bunch of Kenny, we're a couple of ben, Kenny Bell apologists here. But, you know, looking at that, looking at the position of that defender, it's kind of, it's realistic to see how he would, he would not expect to be targeted in that situation. But nonetheless, he still has to be ready at all times to make a catch. So it's a, you know, it's understandable, but still something that he, you know, you probably want to see him continue to work on in terms of, his readiness on those quick hitting routes. And this we looks like we have a route miscommunication. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything about this play that would lead you to think that it's one or the other without asking the quarterback or the or the wide receiver if you were to I don't want to put you in a position to guess if you don't feel like it's 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 too easy not, you know. If, yeah, if you know, to, but. can you bring it back to the original, to the yeah. to the line? Yeah. All right. See, I wish I could see the corner at the bottom, but I, in this case, a lot of times, 
you're you're reading cover two, right? Right. And it looks like this was one of those route conversions to where he converted it to cover to the post uh, on not the post but to the corner on cover two. Whereas if it's cover three, you're supposed to just bump inside that safety and and run that that skinny post. I think that's what happened. And the quarterback, for whatever reason, read read post. He read corner and because he. Yeah, cause see how this this corner up top, he kind of wants to go to the flat, but there's nothing there, so he stays at home and just carries him over to the safety. But uh, I think that that was a, a cover two conversion to the corner up. Yeah, do, do you think pressure had anything to to drive our quarterback's decision here to just say, okay, let me let me get rid of this ball. No, he wouldn't it could. Get this way, but yeah, it, it could. See, it's tough because we're only seeing half of the field. But I, I really think that that was a misread by the quarterback. I, yeah. I really do. I agree. I, I would. I would guess the same thing. I mean, and I and I almost wonder if pressure induced him to kind of almost have that temporary, you know, kind of like a brain fart and go. I if I if he had a chance to read it a little bit fat, you know, take a little one more step to read it and see. He might have. He might not have done that. But I almost felt like he was. You also wonder if it's like the pressure got him. Like I gotta get rid of it, and then mm -hmm. f forgot that this was a conversion or didn't recognize the conversion opportunity. But yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that is sweet. So, <laughs> I used to love those cut blocks, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he timed it perfectly, rolled right into him. That's a perfect cut block. Yeah, I mean, if and if it weren't for number 17, it, the, wow, wow. I mean, just watch this guy's hips. Just yeah, look that's at that. a hit right there. This while he pops back up to help out and make the play, it's only because 78 misses this block. Exactly. Otherwise, our quarterback's at the numbers, and this gentleman who just got popped by Kenny Bell is probably a yard or two behind and chasing. Wow, that was quite a, that was quite a block right there. And just look, we'll look at it one more time, just to talk about what he does here because it's part of that nice cut block is working from an angle where he he takes out that side that that outside leg and just the force to go through the body not just to hit it but to go through it mm -hmm. and then see how he gave that little roll kind of took him down with it the, the major thing with, with chopping is, is you can't you can't lunge you know you have to time it right and he times it perfectly it's a clean block right there yeah that's an that's like his whole body's like a fist punching right there just and that roll like you said is great because look this defender isn't even facing the ball carrier at this point because yeah. of the angle that he took that's what you want to see. Now, you would hope that they could have gotten tangled a little bit and he's not able to, you know, the defender's not able to get up. But this is about as good as you're going to be. You, you, this is as much as you should expect from a cut block in terms of having the, the defender facing away from the ball carrier and on the ground. Yeah, that's a beautiful play. Another guy he kind of reminds me of a little bit, but a little more physical is Emmanuel Sanders. Do you do you see any yeah, of that? I, I could see that with his ability to win downfield. I mean, and it, here, here's a perfect example. It, you know, his ability to make that catch downfield. I could definitely see that. A guy that I I told him he reminds me of is Kenny Stills, the the deep ability. Yeah. And just the fact that neither one well. Coming into the the combine and then his pro day, he just ran the two four three fives. I did not think that this guy was fast, but that was the reason why I, I kind of saw similarities between him and Kenny Stills because Kenny Stills is a guy that that isn't 
doesn't have track speed, but he gets down the field. He's a burner on the field. Yeah. Makes sense. Beautiful catch right there. Yeah. Just want to see. He fights it a little bit, but nothing that... It's everything that he fights. What I love is that even when he fights the ball a little bit here, he's catching with his fingertips. It's right. not bouncing off his palms. He's able to control those types of those types of catches. And I think he's got pretty good hand size to boot. To, so controlling a ball like that is not a big thing. There he is, tangling with a linebacker. Yeah. But he just he stays with the pursuit. He doesn't give up. He misses his first block, but he stays with that pursuit, which is, again, you know, it's like dancing. You know, you are you just keep dancing and through the music until the music's over. You miss a step, it's all right. <laughs> you know, just keep moving. Finish the play right there. I like that. Yep. This is a guy that's not he's he doesn't shirk away from contact at all. Sometimes poor Abdullah is like a, a, a one-man gang in a backyard, in a back alley fight, man. There's so many guys there. you yeah. got to take them all out. It's true. It's funny, as you can see, Bell having to think on this play a little bit. You know, it's kind of like, okay, well, I've already missed this block. Why am I going to try that? Because he's already shooting that gap. Let me mm -hmm. turn back around and find somebody else. Okay. And and you can see where what you commented on when you talked to him, he said that you know strength is something he wants to work on, especially when it comes to the blocking. Just being able to latch on and stay and control that man and turn him. You can see where that that could come into play with his upper body a little bit more. Definitely. Yeah, but I'm with you. I love guys like this because it's like it's fun to. It's so much fun to project where you think they can improve and where they will and if they do what that means for their future because you see the you see that spark. Yeah. And I think a lot, you know a lot of what you're seeing is him trying to work with his teammates, whether it's trying to find a way to get open. There's a nice little move to get to brush off there and get across, but yeah, it's a nice release. Get off that jam. Yeah. Set on the window, catch the ball. There you go. Break the tackle. Uh, see, this is kind of the opposite of what we saw in the last game on that drop to where he was trying to uh, make a play before he caught the ball. You know, right here, he he secured the ball, gets upfield right away. You have yeah. to like that in receiver, give vertical instantly. Yeah. And he fights. I mean, he definitely fights for every every inch he can get. You can see that in a number of ways. I mean, one is just, you know, he's in that dry phase to try and get through already. He's got the pads down. He's driving through here. Even when he loses his balance, he tries to plant that hand and that mm -hmm. foot, hoping that maybe he lands well enough that he can do a touch drill and get and keep going. But these are all just kind of natural things that are incorporated into his game. 
I don't know if natural is it, but definitely things that he's integrated into his game over time that are that you would call maybe instinctive at this point. All right. So what do you what do you think? One more, shall we? Oh, for sure. All right. Then let's watch this Illinois game here. Get this one on. Yeah. All right. Let me get the. Where would you like to see a guy like Kenny Bill Kenny Bell playing, if you if you had a chance? If, I think there's a couple good teams. I think the 49ers would be a good team for him to go to and that they need a guy that could win outside and downfield. I think that would be an excellent place for him to go, and especially with Kaepernick and his desire to get vertical. So that would be a good one. Um, man, I think Miami would also be a, a good spot for him because they could always – you got Jarvis Landry working underneath. Who knows what's going to happen with Mike Wallace. But Tannehill is another one that likes to throw the ball downfield. Maybe not as good as Kaepernick, but he does like to get downfield. So you, you want to have those guys that can win outside. I think he's one of the better X receivers in this draft, honestly. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I had a we had a colleague on Twitter was act, talking hopefully for Kansas City. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was saying, I you know, I hope they can get a guy who would throw the ball downfield to them. And he joked, he goes, downfield, what is that? You know? <laughs> you know, Alex Smith, he I, actually, Kenny Bell would be a good fit for them. Alex Smith, he likes to throw the ball. If he's going to go downfield, it's going to be outside the numbers, as strange as that sounds. Yeah. He just he doesn't trust what he sees enough to throw the ball, to throw that post and things like that. He, he just doesn't trust. But then he could throw the seam. I mean, when he was with the 49ers, he was hitting Vernon Davis on that seam route. That was their bread and butter. So I, I don't know, man. Alex is just a guy that you, he's, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I'll, know about him. Alex is a, Alex has his quirks, and you know what you you, you kind of know what you get with him as an NFL quarterback. It's just that when you're picked number one overall, you're expecting everything from the yeah. guy, and he does not deliver that. But I, I mean, yeah. But I'm with you. I mean, Bell. You know, if Bell were in a system like Kansas City, I mean, certainly he can give you yards after the catch. He can certainly give you routes. Hone his. He's going to continue to hone routes and be able to work the sidelines for you on timing plays. Um, so, I mean, he can certainly be an asset in that, but I agree with you. It probably wouldn't be where he would have the greatest – he could have the greatest impact. Mm -hmm. This draft is just so deep at receiver, though. That's – that's the good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's interesting. I've just – there's patience for you right? again. I mean, again, this is this plays over by the time Bell even gets a chance to make a block. But it's nice that he's he's letting the, the defender dictate when it's time to uh, close in. Oh, are you in on the other game? You know what? Do, is it not showing up? No, no. <laughs> I was, I was uh, saying creating small talk. <laughs> you, you're <laughs> watching me. You know, this is sad. All right. All right, here we go. How about that? Let's go back here. All right, here we go. This is what's fun about this show is that I don't have any sponsors. I don't plan on getting any sponsors. I don't think any sponsors are planning on getting me. So we can uh, – we're going to have things like this happen. It's all right. You get real football talk. You know, that's, that's right. above all, all else. This is all educational for us. I'm not mad at that block. I'm not mad at that at all. No, nah, it's a nice shield. It's, you know, it serves its purpose. Even when you, even when he is not delivering the best blocks, 
he's always giving the effort. This is a guy who's always trying to look for that opportunity as opposed to lots of players we see who are trying to find ways to look like they blocked. That's a perfect example. Didn't really do it. Yeah. He could have stayed downfield, but look, he wants to come back and get that possible kill shot. Yeah. Yeah. And quarterbacks and running backs and tight ends are going to love him for that. Mm -hmm. Those are guys that, those are guys that your teammates, your teammates want to play with a guy like that. Very true. And they want to reward you too when they get a chance. Hey man, look at that. Yeah. That's an awesome block right there. Turns him. And tell us about why why a lot of blocking is about the feet in addition to the hand position. Well, the feet really is, is your base. That's that's where your power is. That's how you, you, you set yourself up. That's your foundation to deliver the block. And really it allows you to turn the guy like this. Uh, I mean, it looks like the, the DB wanted to kind of flow downfield a little bit, but he just kind of turned him and, and used his momentum, and, and you just can set such a, a barrier between yourself and, and the ball carrier. And it's just uh, you have to have good footwork because you have to be able to, to move with the DB. You have to be able to, like I said, create your foundation. Yeah, and I think what you brought up was great is that the DB wants to move here because watch this shoulder move outside and in the next right there. Once that shoulder moves outside and gets outside there, Bell already Bell knows what's happening here, and then watch Bell's feet and just sidestepping like sets, that. Yep. Keeps his base under him, like you said. That's a terrific point, and that was the key that he noticed is he didn't have to watch the ball carrier. He didn't have to look back, and he doesn't look back, and that's the other thing I love about this guy. I mean, it's understandable as a wide receiver that you're thinking, is this guy going to run up on my legs, you know, but right. he's focused on the player. He's not foc He's not going, is this play over yet so that I can uh, – I can disengage and not get hurt. And there are plenty of players. I mean, and some of that's, you know, as a football player, you can say that's not really condonable or understandable. As a human being who's thinking, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get my legs rolled up on, it's pretty understandable, you know? Yeah, definitely. I look at this. He, I like this again. He got himself in great position knows where the play is going and, and knows where he has to get, knows his assignment and, and gets in the way. I mean, you would like to see him, again, drive him a little bit more, but at the same time, he got in the way. And yeah. In some cases, that's all you need to do. In this case, you want to see, like I said, you want to see more from him, get yeah. him out of the way. But, again, 43, he made a pretty good play right there also to, to slow down the, the runner. Yeah. And there's one of Abdullah's fumbles. Of uh, he has a fairly high fumble rate, but it has been. They say it has been a. Is that a, that's not Abdullah? I thought that was. I thought that was the. Uh, that's thirty-four. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's the backup. There you go. And there's the patience that I was talking about earlier when I was watching this alone. <laughs> yeah, look at that. He's waiting for him. Uh, man. And it's through the whistle. You know, this is, again, that intensity. And we talked, you know, on that play where the back fumbled, he got rolled up on on that play. Didn't phase him at all. He's still going downfield. He's still looking for guys. You know, that that to me is part of what defines toughness. You know, when when people say you can't define toughness, we've watched a lot of evidence of his toughness in this game already. Not only is he seeking out guys to punish with blocks, he's not worried about the punishment he's going to take. 
He's not looking around for it to see if he can get away with and avoid it. He's not, you know, when he, and then you got the, that takes physical and mental toughness. Mm -hmm. And then you have the mental toughness of dropping multiple balls and then coming back and still making plays. Um, you know, so this is a, this is what you could define as a, as a tough football player. You could easily take a checklist or of some sort of like evaluation tool and just write, you know, does he rebound from poor catch situations? Does he try to avoid contact in situations that are, you know, does he try to avoid contact when he needs to ignore, you know, the possibility of getting, you know, hit? You know, those yeah. are those are things that you could track, and you would and you would probably be able to predict who's tough and who's who's not quite as tough. It's a nice one there. I think another thing along those lines is the way, like we looked at in the Northwestern game, how they rely on him on on third downs to to make the catch and get yardage after the catch. That shows trust, and also it shows toughness to be able to break that tackle and get those first downs. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a great point, and it's the you know, and it also goes for the fact that they love to run the ball to his side when he's blocking because he is a good blocker, and they trust him to give his all. So yeah, those are those are all those are all little things that that mean a lot, and they all add up. Option. Yep. And completely out of the play. Yeah, when this play is over, <laughs> yeah, this is like those old time that's wrestling right. matches at the end here. That's toughness right there, man. That's drive. That's ferociousness. You gotta like that. Yeah. He's not even, and at this point, he's not looking. It's not that he's being. It's not that he's being a cheap shot artist. Okay, he's not looking back at the at the runner and thinking. This is this play over yet? He doesn't see anybody whistling at this stage right here. He may not have heard the whistle at this point. We'll see, but we know that he's waiting until you know maybe here, probably when he drove him out, he probably heard the whistle. But at the you know you like someone who plays to the echo of the whistle. You may not like him if you're the opponent, but you love him when he's your teammate. Right. And this type of separation isn't bad either. Tell me about it. Easy. Hopefully they show us slow. I would, I would like to see how. I mean, obviously you had the, the blitz off the edge. To, okay, let's see. That safety looks like he's just never going to get over there. Yeah, that's exactly it. Hey, look at that. Yeah, he missed. You can tell he misjudged what was happening here. The safety's thinking a different route because watch him kind of just plant his feet here, and he's like, oh, "I've got to make an adjustment." And once he had to make that adjustment, Kenny Bell raises his hand and Randy knows Moss. he's open. Yep, <laughs> Randy Moss did exactly. <laughs> he's like, "I am wide open," and about thirty yards later, love it the ball arrives. He knows he's open at least 30. Let's see. I, I think it's even more. I think it's 40 yards. Let's see when he raises his hand just for the fun of it here. He raises his hand at the 47. Look at that. Yeah. It goes 13. back to, I'm telling you, that's the mentality. If I'm even, I'm leaving. And he was even with him right there. And as soon as you get even with a DB, you just know in your heart and in your mind that, that you're going to leave him. That's just the, the bottom line. Yeah. So you're talking, and it's true, and here he is at the 47 and at the 15, 38 yards or 32. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, we're looking at let's yeah, see, 10, 20, 30, 35. Yeah, 38 yards later from the point of where he says, I'm open, he still has three or four yards on the on the safety. Yeah. When you know, you know. 
and that's a lot of that is it's just technique and angles and when you recognize that you have the angle it's over definitely it just amazes me that not more people are, are, are talking about this kid I'm telling you it's it's crazy to me I find the same I have the same thing it's funny I, I'm I mentioned him to a scout that I know and he said to me this he said to me that he hasn't heard much, many people talk about him either but from his opinion his opinion he said yeah he's gonna definitely be an underrated player in this draft and he is if there is a if there is a sleeper if that term still exists he's he's a sleeper people are fall, people have fallen asleep on this guy tested well at the combine you know yeah extremely well yeah exactly and you know some of the things that they saw at the combine model some of the things we saw here I mean leaping ability agility great long speed good burst very good change of direction some drops but also some impressive catches too and I'll take a player who can make impressive catches and tight coverage but also drop some like this on occasion or Yeah, he had the hand placement right on that one, but yeah, didn't pull it in. You, you got to make those catches, but uh, again, that's something that can come with time. Yeah, and it's not a. I don't. the The difference for him will be: is it a, is it a mechanical issue with his technique? Is it a concentration issue, or is it he's just simply doesn't track or gauge a ball well I think we've seen him track and gauge a ball very well right we've seen we've seen where the mechanics could be cleaned up we've also seen some that could go either way and say some of it is on the quarterback with the positioning of these throws um, where it's not at the angle he expected or it's into coverage that he didn't expect to get the ball um, but you know the things that he can correct I would say the thing that's hard to correct is tracking a ball if you can't track a ball well or if you can't catch with your fingertips well it's gonna be hard to probably get better it's probably gonna be hard to improve that but he already does those things well so it's really to me I think it's about mechanics and he can improve his mechanics and it's not and it's not anything that are um, insurmountable because he already displays he can he has good solid hands I mean that's a good catch right there that's, right a, there, that's, a, that's a tough catch to make in traffic down and away I mean that's that's definitely a tough but see this goes back to what we said about the one that he dropped on the sideline you see here you have the proper hand placement and you it, they always would say when you play you place your hands like you mentioned, pinkies down and to, together on the inside. And when the ball hits, it just has the, the natural, it, it naturally rolls up your arm, which allows you to tuck it. And then if you see right here, he lands on his shoulder and then just rolls, and that even further allows him to secure the ball to his body and make make a catch like that. Look. Yeah. <laughs> and that was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And but see, this is the thing that I always love because you know people go, people will look at this and go, "Well, come on now, that was luck. That was a lucky catch." I mean, he caught the thing between his thighs. I mean, this looks like he's doing the Suzanne Summers workout here, you know, <laughs> rather, than he, rather than making a play. But when you have a guy who shows good awareness on the field, like he does in so many situations, these are the little things that add up. This is. Players, guys like this, guys like Wes Welker, you know, guys who, guys who do a lot of the little things well, make plays like this. Just sticking to it all yeah. the way through. Yeah. Yeah, that's a never say die attitude. From the blocking. It's focus and concentration, just like he is when he's blocking and getting rolled up on to the being the back of the end zone and 
basically, you know, taking the guy out of the ring to this right here. And like he said, you know, the fact that he used, and the thing is, is the fact that he used the technique that we saw here, where he used his hands the way that you want, that gave him a second chance. Because with poor technique, the ball bounces off his body without the hands being the first filter. And then it's harder to have to make a play like that. Yeah, it goes straight down. Yeah. And another nice thing about this play is, you know, this is a this is a play that would obviously get a replay call, but he gets up after he makes his play, and you saw it earlier, he just kind of gets up and pumps his fist and runs off like it was no big thing. Right. The confidence that he made the catch. Yeah. Come back and do it again. Yep. I think that that play right there that you showed really it, it 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 tells perfectly what we're saying about the hand placement. See how his hands are down. Look how the ball. Look what the ball does. Yep. See Bounces that? into his forearm. It rolls into his forearm, and he's just he just was unable to secure it right away. And then this ends up having to make a very incredible type of play to catch it. Basically, he braces it with his shins after you know after getting it with his thighs at first. But yeah, that's a fantastic effort. And that's the thing about this guy. You know, again, you want a player. This is a player. I mean. You're going to laugh because, you know, I've got a 49ers fan. We've got the 49ers fan here and the Seahawks fan talking right now. And I'm going, this is a guy that the Seahawks I could see liking if they weren't trusting Paul Richardson to come back because he has a lot of the characteristics Paul Richardson does. Mm -hmm. And that same never-say-die attitude that the Seahawks have, which they tend to – they they Pete Carroll tends to be like, look – if you screw up and you make mistakes, we're going to keep you in the game as long as it's not they're not dumb mistakes. If they're effort mistakes, that's okay. Right. We're all about high effort here. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's all, there's a lot to love about a player like that. Um, you, you know, I, I agree with you, Tron. I think he's very underrated. I think we saw a lot of the good along with you know some of the things that were fair criticisms of his game and. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's a fifth or sixth round pick, um, but a guy who, much like Marvin Jones, comes into a camp and they go, we kind of like this guy. Yeah. By year's end, is playing a little bit more than you imagined, and or like, or like um, Kenny Stills, same deal. So, good call on the Kenny Stills. Yeah, he liked that one actually when I told him. So I, he now he said that the the receiver that he likes the most, that he patterns his game after the most, is, is Demarius Thomas. And I guess I must have gave him a look. And he said, well, I know I'm not as big as Demarius Thomas, but I like the way he runs his routes. So that, that was a good comparison. You could kind of see the understanding in, in the routes, the, the way he runs the routes. So I like that. But you're right, Marvin Jones, Kenny Stills, those are probably the, the best comparisons for this guy. The Marvin Jones one, I didn't even think about that until you mentioned it. And watching him and his ability to make plays on the sideline like that downfield. It's, it's and just a, a mature understanding of the position. That was the thing I loved about Marvin Jones. And Kenny Bell brings this as well. Yeah, I think so. And I love that the fact that he likes I love the fact that he that he says that he aspires to be like Demarius Thomas. Because even on even when we watch the tape, even physically, like you said, you give him a look, but his heart, he plays with the kind of heart and toughness of a guy who is a lot bigger than, than mm -hmm. his listed height and size. So the fact that he looks at a guy and go, I want to be like that, you know, I want to be, a, I want to play like a guy who bullies people and who is bigger than they are, says a lot. I mean, almost kind of psychologically, that says a lot, you know, about the guy, you know. Yeah. I, I love that even more. So, 
No, definitely. I I definitely appreciate you joining me today, Toronto. Um, like I said, man, it's an honor, man. I love your work. I'm a big fan of your work. Every everything oh, you post, I always make sure I read it, man. So to actually get to be a part of it, man, it's awesome. Oh well, I appreciate it. We definitely look forward to having you on some more. So you and all the fellas from um, Football Game Plan. I mean, I've, Emery's been great. I want to get Gene on here at some point too, and definitely have you back, Teron. So thanks again, and everyone. Um, thanks for watching the show, and you can tune in and watch other RSP Film Rooms just by going to YouTube and searching RSP Film Room, and you can subscribe there. So thanks again, everyone, and you have a good night.